All praise is due to Allah, the Most High, the Most Exalted. He created all things, gave them the features He willed to give them, and guided them to the functions best suited for them. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and beloved chosen messenger. He will be the leader of all people on the day of resurrection. He conveyed Allah's message completely, fulfilled all that was entrusted to him, and left us upon a path so clear that its night is just as bright as its day, and none strays from it except someone who leads himself to his own demise. May Allah grant an abundance of commendation and protection to his messenger, as well as to the messenger's immaculate family, to his wives who were the mothers of the people of Iman, to his esteemed companions, and to all who continue to follow their path until the day of recompense. My dear audience, I counsel all of you, as well as myself, to observe taqwa of Allah by fulfilling His commands and avoiding His prohibitions. That is the counsel that was given to all former and latter generations. By way of taqwa, the scattered can be gathered, the small can become large, the ruined can be repaired, and the fallen can be raised. By way of taqwa, hearts find peace, adversities are removed, fears are calmed, and a person becomes one of Allah's awliya, obedient worshipping servants. Indeed, the awliya of Allah will not have reason to feel any fear or sorrow. They are the people who had iman and continually observed taqwa. Servants of Allah, in the Qur'an and Sunnah, our Lord granted the Ummah of Islam blessings which strengthen the ties between its individuals and place them on equal standing in terms of their responsibility to comply with His directives. All of us trace our lineage back to our father Adam and our mother Hawa. Thus, no person has the right to boast that he is better than anyone else. Just because a person is light-skinned, that does not make him better than someone dark-skinned. And just because a person is of Arab descent, that does not make him better than someone of non-Arab descent. The only thing that gives a person virtue over others is the extent to which he observes taqwa. That is the standard that Allah gave us for true virtue. As for people's lineages, languages, and skin tones, those exist as part of what allows them to know and identify each other. Allah said, Mankind, we certainly created you from one male and one female. Thereafter, we made you descend as various peoples and tribes so that you could know and identify each other. Indeed, the most honorable of you to Allah are those who observe taqwa most. This knowing each other is to exist between people in such a way that it brings them together and removes differences or animosity that could exist between them. Allah did not make humans into various peoples and tribes for some to transgress against others, fight against them, or insult them. Furthermore, he did not make their languages, skin tones, or homelands the basis for their unity. Rather, he designated a religion for them which gathers them and does not divide them and sets things right for them and does not spoil them. It eliminates sectarianism and arrogance from among them just as fire eliminates the impurities of iron. However, there are individuals who explain certain matters in ways that suit their own purposes, not according to the actual realities and meanings that their Creator wants from them based on His infinite wisdom and justice. Such people are led by disobedient inclinations rather than intellect and recklessness rather than wisdom. They put their own motives ahead of dealing with things correctly and blindness ahead of sound direction. Their actions have produced a lopsided and incomplete course that leads to terrible degrees of bias, bigotry, and partisanship. I implore Allah to grant all of you His protection. Bigotry breeds scorn within a person's soul towards those who are outside of his own circle from a different ethnicity, or have a different line of descent. Having that outlook towards others is a serious sin and major ill. How could it be otherwise when the Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, said, it is enough of an evil trait for a person to scorn his Muslim brother. This was collected by Abu Dawood. Dear Muslims, bigotry can infiltrate a person's system such that it makes his heart constricted towards others. And that leads him to give importance to none beyond himself and those within his own circle. This is contrary to being tolerant towards others. Tolerance is a quality which expands one's heart and makes it accommodate all of his brothers in Islam, regardless of what differences or social disparities 
may exist between them, such that the bond of Islam between them always remains intact. May Allah grant all of you his protection. You must also realize that anyone who harbors bigotry is led onwards by disobedient inclinations which render him blind and deaf to what is correct. No person of bigotry has ever been known for being fair, impartial, reasonable, or moderate. A person of bigotry is in fact a yes man who blindly follows others. His sights are set on nothing besides his own disobedient inclinations as well as those who find his outlook appealing. Furthermore, this bigotry is undoubtedly a contagious disease and it leads anyone affected by it to no longer see matters in the correct light. Such a person sees relatively minor blemishes in his brother without seeing his own massive defects and he finds fault with others but does not recognize the things he himself does which are far worse than what he faults others for. No one is free from some sort of flaw regardless of whatever knowledge, status, lineage or ideas one possesses. Many people who ignore their own flaws hide them with a barrier of bigotry so as to present an image of alleged perfection. Servants of Allah, harboring bigotry wastes one's energy and harnesses it for blameworthy purposes. It amounts to foolishness which makes a person incorrectly imagine that he has some sort of special distinction and unparalleled greatness. In reality, it is like what a little cat might do if it puffs itself up pretending to be a fierce lion. I swear by Allah that the notions such a person has about himself are as flimsy as the threads out of which a spider weaves his home. But the frailest of homes is indeed the spider's home if only those people realize this. Servants of Allah, if all the preceding is kept in mind, we should recognize that when reference is made to bigotry in the Quran and Sunnah, it is only mentioned in a blameworthy way and as a feature of the era of ignorance prior to Islam. It is a trait that stands at odds with the dignified traits and aims of Islam. Allah the Most Majestic said, Messenger of Allah remember and inform the people about when the residents of Mecca who rejected the truth ingrained arrogance and bigotry within their hearts. That being the arrogance and bigotry which existed in the era of ignorance prior to Islam. In addition, the Prophet said, Indeed, Allah, the Almighty and Most Majestic, has rid anew of the bigotry from the era of ignorance prior to Islam, as well as the arrogance that existed among people during that time regarding their ancestry. A person is either an obedient worshipping servant of Allah, or a disobedient individual who will end up in misery. All of you are descendants of Adam, and Adam was created from soil. It is absolutely necessary for people to desist from boasting about individuals who will end up as mere coals for the hellfire. If they do not desist, they will be even less significant to Allah than a beetle that rolls dung with its nose. This is collected by Abu Dawood. The Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, also said, if someone rebelliously disobeys the authorities and breaks away from the people who are doing what is correct and then dies in that state, he dies a death of jahiliyyah, the heir of ignorance prior to Islam. If someone fights blindly with no legitimate reason, out of bigoted alliance his own faction, calling others to them and furthering their cause, and is then killed in that state, he is killed in a state of jahiliyyah. This is collected by Muslim. Additionally, there was an instance when Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, heard one of the Ansar cry out regarding one of the Muhajirin who had hit him, saying, My fellow Ansar, assist me against this man. And the individual from the Muhajirin cried out in response, My fellow Muhajirin, assist me against him. However, the Messenger of Allah, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, Why these calls of Jahiliyyah? The companions replied, Messenger of Allah, a man among the Muhajirin struck the back of a man among the Ansar. He responded, forsake these calls because they are indeed repugnant. This is collected by Bukhari and Muslim. After the Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, the companions and their successors followed the same course. There are also many words from each one of the four Imams, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi, and Ahmed, showing that none of them was partisan towards his own opinion and each of them disowned any opinion he may have had that opposed the Qur'an and Sunnah. A basic principle each of them stated for their contemporaries and successors to comprehend was, if a hadith is authentic, that is my madhab, the path I follow. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that if someone is partisan towards his own family, acquaintances, people from his own locale, or those who follow his school of Islamic law or legal theory, such that he only listens to those and no one else, that person has traits from the era of ignorance prior to Islam. The people of Iman are to be as Allah instructed them, firmly adhering to the Qur'an and Sunnah. Their book 
is one, their religion is one, their prophet is one, and their Lord Allah is one. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah. All praise belongs to Him in the beginning and the end. All decision ultimately belongs to Him, and all people will eventually return to Him. Anyone who forsakes ascribing to Islam and the Qur'an, and instead he makes his primary ascription to a certain lineage, place, ideology, or any other path, has certainly followed the course of Jahiliyyah in choosing an ascription for himself. Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that there was bigotry from the era of ignorance prior to Islam, such as partisanship towards one's own people or tribe. Similar to it is partisanship towards certain schools of Islamic law or to certain factions or scholars and declaring some to be better than others. When allegiance and disavowal happen based on those things, all of that is part of the same bigotry from the Arab ignorance prior to Islam. With all of that being said, it can be readily understood that bigotry is very much blameworthy and it claims numerous victims. Many have been lost to partisanship and arrogance. Many families have been split due to them. Many have broken away from the jama'ah due to them and then ended up facing grave consequences. When two enemies face off during battle, one generally ends up dead while the other lives on. However, if two bigots face off, both of them are as good as dead because bigotry itself destroys each one of them servants of Allah, an enlightened mind would not subject itself to the narrow ideas of bigotry. It is therefore no wonder that the enlightened mind does not allow itself to be blown over by winds of bigotry or to draw from the influences of bigotry. Allah certainly spoke the truth when he said, remember the blessings Allah granted you since you were once enemies, but Allah united your hearts and you became brothers by his favor. I say this much, I implore Allah to forgive me, you and all Muslim men and women for every sin and misdeed. Thus seek forgiveness from Allah and repent to Him. My Lord is certainly most forgiving, bestower of mercy. Never ending praise is due to Allah. He deserves the fondness of glorification and we implore Him to grant commendation and protection to Muhammad, the most virtuous of His chosen messengers. Indeed, the best speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad and may Allah grant commendation and protection. The worst things are those which are innovated and claim to be part of Islam. All such innovations are classified as bid'ah and all bid'ah is misguidance. You must also remain with the jama'ah, the collective of Muslims which adheres to what is correct because the hand of Allah is over the jama'ah. Servants of Allah, bigotry is something blameworthy according to Islam's pristine teachings. It follows that the same applies to all channels which foster and encourage it, whether at the level of individuals, groups, organizations, or clubs, and whether in the form of prose, poetry, or mottos. When an end is impermissible, so are the means leading to it. In contrast, when a person uses means correctly, they do not lead to blameworthy ends. A discerning individual must recognize that bigotry is a manifestation of pride, arrogance, and claiming perfection. In reality, any bigot has flaws, and people will see that and speak about them. We must always remember that the Prophet, may Allah grant commendation or protection, stated, all of Adam's descendants repeatedly make mistakes, but the best individuals who make those mistakes are the ones who constantly repent. This is collected by Ahmed and others. Among the most effective means to averting and treating bigotry is adhering to Islam's teachings, since they lead a person to remain fair and to avoid injustice and dishonesty. A further means is ensuring that our young ones are raised with a sound understanding of unity and remaining with the jama'ah, as well as a sound understanding of the fact that the two sources of Islam, the Quran and Sunnah, provide solid defense against bigotry, whether it be in relation to people's color, language, gender, homeland, tribe, or school of Islamic law. There is unanimous consensus among scholars of Islam that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant commendation and protection, was the best of mankind, his lineage, religion, and message holds the highest status with Allah out of all created beings and will be granted the greatest of intercession on the day of resurrection. However, despite that all, we do not find that he harbored any bigotry or became partisan towards or against anyone. On the contrary, we find that he said, I will be the leader of Adam's descendants. And I'm not saying that to boast. I will be the first to emerge from the earth on the day of resurrection. And I'm not saying that to boast. I will be the first allowed to intercede and the first to have his intercession accepted. And I'm not saying that to boast. And the banner of praise will be in my hand on the day of resurrection. And I'm not saying that to boast. This is collected by Ibn Majah, and similar can be found in the two Sahih collections. The Prophet emphasized that concept by setting an example for his followers. He also said, Do not be excessive in praising me as the Christians did with the son of Maryam. I am indeed only a worshipping servant. Therefore describe me as the worshipping servant of Allah and his messenger. This is collected by Bukhari. Servants of Allah, in short, bigotry brings about many ills for people. It is a door that is quite difficult to close once opened. It is blameworthy and not praiseworthy at all. 
Allah is the one whose assistance we seek and the one who guides to the straight path. May Allah have mercy upon all of you. In conclusion, I invoke Allah to grant his commendation protection to his final messenger. Allah instructed you to do so when he said, people of Iman, invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. O Allah, grant your commendation protection to your worshiping servant and messenger Muhammad. O Allah, be pleased with his four successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of his companions and those who follow their path. O Allah, grant strength to Islam and his people. O Allah, grant strength to Islam and his people. O Allah, grant victory to your religion, your book, the son of your prophet, and your believing worshiping servants. O Allah, rectify the circumstances of Muslims in all places. O Allah, we implore you to support our brothers who are downtrodden in all places. O Allah, Lord of all creation, grant us safety in our lands and make our leaders and authorities people who are righteous. O Allah, guide our leader to all things that you love and are pleased with. You are the ever-living, self-sufficient sustainer of all and we call upon you to answer our prayers. O Allah, guide our leader as well as his deputy to do all that will be best for your servants and their lands. O Allah, none has the right to be worshipped except you. You need none, but we are in dire need of you. We implore you to send the rains for us and do not make us among those who lose hope. O Allah, send the rains for us and do not make us among those who lose hope. O Allah, do not deprive us of the good that comes from you as a result of the bad that we do. O Allah, we call upon you, the Almighty and Most Majestic. Our Lord, grant us good in this world, grant us good in the hereafter, and save us from the torment of the hellfire. Our Lord is perfect in every way. He grants protection to all of His messengers. And the last of our prayers is that all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all creation. <laughs>